Lord, help us to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Please be seated. I want to start out today with a story for you all, a fable, just to be clear. This fable starts with a church little league basketball team. And they're just getting started out. The team has just been formed. They've got the churchyard, which also doubles as their, as their basketball arena. The hoops are up. And the little leaguers are all ready to play. First game is coming up. And one of the, one of the kids on the team shouts out, All right, and our mission today is to go and score as many baskets as possible. And then one of the other kids on the team says, no, it's not. Our mission is to make sure the other team doesn't score baskets. And the first one says to the second one, well, that's stupid. And the second one says to the first one, you're stupid. And then he pushes him down, and pretty soon they're rolling on the ground and fighting with each other. And then the coach, let's call him Jesus, Jesus has to Jesus has to come in and breaks up the fight and says, all right, tell me what's going on. And the first one says, I think, that the go- I think our mission is about good offense. And the other one says, I think our mission is about good defense. Now, I know you all are smart enough to know what Coach Jesus is going to say. That it's actually these things that are polarities with one another are actually complementary, and you need both of them, don't you? Now, this doesn't mean that these are not polarities. It doesn't mean they're not opposed to each other, because they are. Offense, defense, they take two different kinds of training. They take two different skill sets. And as a team, when you put resources toward one, it means you aren't putting those resources toward the other. So they really are in opposition to each other. But the goal is not to see that relationship as adversarial, right? Just because the one player focuses on defense instead of offense, it doesn't mean he's on the other team. They are on the same team, but it does mean that they need to come at their polarity from a place of appreciation for the other. I bring this fable up because I think that is very much what I hear Jesus saying in this gospel story today. In the first century AD, the people of God are excited but squabbling with one another. You've got one group of people that's so excited. The Messiah has come. God is calling us to new things, to change, to grow, to be new people in this changing world around us. And then you've got people on the other side saying, but no, wait, we need to hold on to those traditions as the people of God, the things that brought us here, made us who we are, those core values that God instilled within us for hundreds of thousands of years. And then the first one says to the other, well, that's stupid. And the second one says, why then you're stupid? And then he pushes him down, and then, the, and then you have the people of God rolling on the ground in the churchyard, and the coach has to step in. We'll call the coach Jesus this time. Coach Jesus steps in, and he gives them the parable about salt and tells them that they are like Salt. Now, if you, like me, took the time to look ahead at this reading and then read what it says in the Greek, I know you did your homework ahead of time, you'd look and it says, the language in there is interesting. And here we translate it as, when salt loses its taste, or salt loses its saltiness. What the word gets at there is trying to get to this understanding of that essence of what makes salt salt. What is it for? What is its purpose? And in the first century, salt would have had two very important purposes. We might lose sight on them today because of the uh, miracles of modern refrigeration, but one of the purposes of salt, of course, was to season food, to flavor dishes, to create new dishes, to bring out new flavors, to literally change and transform food into something new. While one of the purposes of salt was to preserve People would pack food in salt to keep it fresh before, before modern refrigeration. Literally taking food and stopping it from changing, preserving it. It served both 
these purposes. It's a polarity. It literally served the purpose to change and to preserve. And Jesus wants their goal to be to not look at those two things as adversarial, as enemies, but to come at it from a place of appreciation for how that polarity will actually strengthen them. Then he tells them they're like a lamp. And you could imagine the silliness of them fighting over whether or not a lamp is useful for for lighting my own way so I can see where I'm going and guide my family so that they don't fall astray. But a lamp could also be used as a guide for others, like a lighthouse, to make sure that ships don't crash under the rocks. You're putting out your light as a service to others, as a guide for others. And imagine getting into a fight over whether or not the light was good for yourself or the light was good for others, because, of course, it's both. And if Jesus has not made the point too clear here, he then just gets right to it because he says, yes, I am very much about going and changing the world. We, the people of God, are are changing things in radically new ways because I am here. And also, I have not come to throw away the law and the prophets. I have come to offer change and to preserve. Polarities. Now, these kinds of polarities face the church, so what does this mean for us? I know the people of St. James, we never have polarities here, right? We never have polarities here. There are two scholars. Uh, One is Roy Oswald, who is the director of the Center for Emotional Intelligence. So that sounds pretty good. And Barry Johnson, who is the president of Uh, He is the president of Polarity Management Associates. And these two gentlemen got together and they wrote a book, and the book is called Managing Polarities, Eight Keys for Thriving Churches. That sounds pretty good to me. We ought to know what these eight keys for managing our polarities to be a thriving church are, and a lot of them won't be surprising. One of the polarities that they mention is tradition versus innovation. Sometimes does it ever feel like we're wrestling between tradition versus innovation? One of them is in-reach versus outreach. I see some nods, right? in reach versus outreach. And there's leadership versus discipleship. There's institutional health versus spiritual health. They list all of these different things that can be used to divide us or draw us together. And we need to resist those forces that would sometimes take our polarities and use them to turn us against one another. You see in Jesus' time, the Pharisees being very willing to do that. The Pharisees are very willing to look at those polarities and say, see, this is why that person on the other side is your enemy. Maybe for us it's not the Pharisees. Maybe for us it might be cable news, some social media, some politicians out there, perfectly willing to have you look at those polarities and see the other side as the enemy. But we offer a different way here. And what Uh, What Oswald and Johnson suggest sounds like such a simple thing. It sounds like a simple thing, but actually it's pretty, pretty profound and pretty important. It's take that versus and turn it into ands. It's not tradition versus innovation. It's tradition and innovation. It's not outreach versus inreach, but outreach and inreach. It's the goal of looking at those polarities from an opportunity of appreciation for the other. In case you didn't notice or you weren't here for our annual meeting last week, that was a little bit of our practice that we did in our annual meeting was we had those appreciative inquiry questions where we gathered around tables with each other and we heard about our passions, our excitements, those things that connect us in our core to God and the people of God around us. And then to ask from a place of appreciation, where do you hear others' excitement? Where do you hear others' energy and connection? And we're going to continue that work. 
We're going to continue that work as the people of St. James in in the weeks and the months to come. A big focus of 2023 is going to be us as the people of God, as the people of St. James, lifting up where are we excited? Where are we seeking to go into deeper connection to make a real difference in the world? And we are going to bump into polarities. We're going to bump into people who have a a deep desire to be a part of the tradition, caring for the deep tradition that connects us and makes us who we are. It may be volunteering to help us with our worship services. It may be teaching young children downstairs so that they grow up in the love and knowledge of God. But we also have people who have a deep desire to look at where the world is causing us to change and be about being on that leading edge of God's work in the world. Those things aren't in conflict. It's and instead of versus. So as we go out into the world, we're not so focused out there that we forget what brought us here to begin with. So we need and the tradition. And we don't need to be fo- so focused, don't want to be so focused on the tradition and looking within ourselves that we forget where we're being called next. So we need and innovation. When we are very focused on going out and making a real difference in the world, being a part of something that matters, like our feeding ministries, where we feed people every Sunday morning here, Every Sunday morning, we have people who come here and they feed 100 to 130 people every Sunday because they know those people might not get a meal on Monday otherwise, and they don't doubt they're a part of something that matters. But if we're always out there and we're never taking care of us in here, that's what leads to burnout, dying on the vine a little bit here. So, and we need the inreach of deep pastoral care being in touch with one another, knowing where we can be there as a friend, as a neighbor to the people in our community. That's where our pastoral care team's coming together. But if we're always just about looking out for ourselves, we're never actually making a difference out in the world, so we need and outreach. I'm doing the swooping motion a lot here, right? But that's to kind of visualize these polarities at work showing they feed each other, they nurture each other, if we can approach it from a place of appreciation. So I'm very excited that in this year, we're going to have lots of opportunities to come together in those moments of appreciation for the many ways in which we are called here to be the people of God. Remain salty, people of St. James. As our coach, Jesus Christ, would now tell us, go team. Amen.